In May 1964, Jim Templeton, a former firefighter and keen photographer from Carlisle in the north of England, took his wife, his nine-year-old daughter Frances, and his five-year-old daughter Elizabeth to Berg Marsh for a fun family picnic and to take pictures. Basically, a normal family outing. They parked on the side of the road and decided to walk across the grassy expanse. The Berg Marsh itself is a beautiful, spacious, grassy expanse that overlooks the Solway Firth estuary. On the far side of the marsh, there were sheep and cows huddled together in one place, grazing, which Jim later said was pretty rare because the cattle usually roamed the area. Everything looked fine, and the weather was warm and sunny. When they found a good spot, he decided to take a picture of his daughter Elizabeth in her new dress, sitting with some flowers that he had picked himself. He took multiple pictures with his camera, and after enough picture taking, they spent quality time as a family. Nothing happened, and when they were done at the Berg, they went home. The end. A few days later, Mr. Templeton took his pictures to the chemist to be developed. This was 1964, so no instant view like we have now with our phones. A couple of days later, Jim went to collect the pictures from the chemist. The chemist told him it was too bad that the man who had walked by had ruined the best picture of Elizabeth holding a bunch of flowers. Jim didn't get it. At that time, there were no other people in the nearby swamps. The only people present were the old women, and they were far away. To his recollection, there was no man in the field, at least no man close to his family at the time of this picture. He took the picture from the chemist's hand to see what he was talking about. And sure enough, in the picture, he could see what looked like a man in a spacesuit standing over the left shoulder of his daughter and at an odd angle. This freaked him out. Heck, it will freak anyone out. He checked other pictures for the spaceman, but there was no sign of the spaceman in them, just this one. The picture itself was weird, so he reported it to the police. The police examined the pictures, did their investigation, and concluded that there was nothing suspicious about it. The picture wasn't tampered with in any way. At first, the police thought it was just a double exposure where one negative got printed on top of another during processing, but it wasn't. The police themselves were stumped. Seeing as the police had no answer, Jim sent the image to the camera company itself, Kodak. They too analyzed the image and found out it wasn't tampered with in any way. What was in the picture was actually in the picture when it was taken. In such, Kodak was so confused and stumped that they offered a reward to anyone who could explain the phenomenon that happened in that picture. The interesting picture got picked up by the press, which then released it. The news broke out about the picture and it drew all kinds of attention from all kinds of curious people who were trying to solve the mystery surrounding the image. Following the publication of the images in various newspapers, several different theories were proposed at that time. One of the theories was that Jim unknowingly captured the picture of the alien, and that both the ship and aliens were shielded by some cloaking device, and as a result were invisible to the human eye, but not to the camera. But Jim told reporters that he didn't see any UFOs or anything out of the ordinary at the time of the strange event. Another theory was that he was a time traveler from the future who was researching the history of nuclear weapons or nuclear energy. There is also the theory that he was from a parallel universe. Some said he was a heavenly being, such as an angel or a god, and some said it was a ghost or even a psychic projection of someone's dream or remote viewing. There were so many theories, but no one could actually tell what it was. In the meantime, during Jim's newfound fame, he was visited by men in black. They were two of them, and they only gave 9 and 11 as their names. They refused to disclose their identity and only said they worked for the government. They persuaded him to take him to the location where he took the picture. When they got there, they interrogated him. They wanted to know everything about everything, the weather on the day of the picture, what the birds were doing, and every other random thing. Then they asked Jim if he saw the spaceman and Jim told them he never did. He only noticed the phenomenon after the picture was printed out. Then they tried to get him to say that all he had done was take a picture of a normal man walking by, not an alien. 
Although Jim talked to them nicely, he didn't like what they were insinuating and refused to submit to their threats. This made them irrationally angry, and they sped off in their car, leaving Jim behind all alone in the Berg mash. He had to walk five miles through the woods just to get home. Now, as of this time, this news was viral. This was during the space war between Russia and America and every other country that wanted to prove themselves as capable. So, any talk about space was a hot gist, meaning this news crossed boundaries despite no social media or internet. After a while, the editor of the Cumberland News newspaper called Jim and asked if he could take the negative to send to Australia. According to the editor, Jim's picture was in the local paper in Australia, and people who worked at the Woomera test range area in southern Australia had seen his picture, and it struck a nerve in them. Apparently, a Blue Streak space rocket was supposed to be launched from Woomera in Australia, just the very next day of him taking the picture. But it didn't go as planned, and the countdown was postponed, because two automatic survey cameras saw two big figures in the firing area at the same time during the countdown phase. And they looked a lot like the image that showed in Jim's picture. The picture hadn't made it to Australia yet, so the staff didn't know about the strange picture at the time of the launch, until days later when it was in the local newspaper. Group Captain Tom Dalton Morgan ran the Woomera rocket test range from 1959 to 1963, and he collaborated by telling his own story. Before the first test firing of the Blue Streak rocket, observers 100 miles away called Tom to say that there was a light coming at him at incredible speeds, moving toward the restricted airspace. Tom and a few other experts watched as the light circled the building, shot off, and disappeared. He said, and I quote, could not conceive of any plane or missile that was able to perform the maneuvers seen by my team. In 1964, they had to cancel the launch of another test because a white being was seen on the automatic security cams. He also claimed that UFOs were often seen in the area, which was supported by a lot of people. Then, Jim Templeton later found out that Blue Streak rockets were being made in the UK at Spadeutum which is a few miles away from Berg Marsh on the road that goes from Carlisle to Newcastle, which just happens to be the location where he took the picture. That is a lot of coincidence if you ask me. Also, a film canisters that hold the Blue Streak rocket launches is mysteriously missing. The film of the launches for the week starting May 23rd, 1964 is in the lost canister. This is why people believed the theory that the spaceman was a time traveler from the future who was researching the history of nuclear weapons or nuclear energy and could be trying to stop it. For a long time, we didn't know what was behind Elizabeth. That is until 2014, when the truth finally came out after 50 years. According to England's investigative journalist, David Clark, the mysterious spaceman figure was no one other than Annie Templeton, Jim's wife, who had accidentally photobombed the snapshot. He and a lot of people believe that the spaceman is actually Annie Templeton, who walked into the background of the picture without being seen, became overexposed and bloomed, making her transform into a larger, unrecognizable person. And when you consider it, it does make sense. You see, the camera Jim was using was a 35 mm still camera with the aperture setting of f16 and it also had a viewfinder that let him see 70 percent of the frame because of this he couldn't see the whole picture and probably didn't see his wife standing in the back all these meant that when he took the pictures the settings of the camera would have made the overexposure or too much light present turning annie into a spaceman as for the helmet annie would have probably been with a hat or according to this channel it was the moon Watch. People often see a waxing gibbous moon in the afternoon, shortly after moonrise. The moon at this phase is easy to see in the day. It's typically seen at a low angle in the sky between 10 and 20 degrees. On the 23rd of May 1964, 94.49% of the moon was lit. So it may have appeared even fuller than in this image. Let's go back to our composite photograph. There's clearly a white dome over the head of our mystery figure. Let's see if we can remove it. We're left with a very small looking head, but that's the only dark 
dark area that's left once the white dome has been removed. Let's now put the waxing gibbous moon in the sky. That does look between 10 and 20 degrees, but it's too sharp. Let's put it out of focus so that it matches the fuzzy appearance of our character and the clouds. Let's now slide it behind our spaceman to see if we can recreate that dome. <laughs> Let's go back to our earlier composite photograph. The spaceman theory comes from the fact that the dark area looks like a visor. I think it's the back of Annie's head and the image has been distorted by the presence of the moon. We don't see her entire head. Let's put the back of a normal sized female head on our spaceman that I think we would have seen if Annie hadn't clashed with the moon. Suddenly the whole body looks to be more in proportion, the shoulders look less broad and everything looks well with the world. That to my mind is a very credible explanation for why we have the look of a helmet on this image. The photograph was taken when Annie's head was perfectly lined up with the moon from the viewpoint of Jim's camera. First of all, we are not insulting that channel or the beloved narrator. We showed you that clip to show just as believers can't settle on what was behind Elizabeth, critics too can't decide on how much of a hoax this image is. Another reason why people don't believe him is because the story about the two agents visiting Jim only had one verified source, Jim. No one could support Jim's claim of being accosted by two men in black, not even his boss or coworker. And according to Jim's story, the men in black met him at work or at home or just somewhere, depending on the version you heard first. That alone is a concern. Then apparently, Jim was a known prankster. Yep, he pranked people. There is proof that he liked pulling practical jokes on people. For example, he had created a faked five pound note for fun only weeks before the photograph was taken just to show off his photographic skills. And where he developed the pictures was like a second home to him. In his words, everybody in the developing department knew me. Templeton may have made the spaceman picture while trying to get better at photography or someone in the processing rooms may have tampered with the film to make the alien picture because they knew Templeton liked practical jokes and wanted to play one on him. Either way, no one expected the picture to go viral. That, along with the fact that Jim's daughter was upset about all the attention she was getting, meant that Jim could not admit to a lie. Or for someone to say, sorry, Jim, it was just a joke. This all makes sense, right? But here is where I have a problem with this theory. It's a theory, it's an assumption. Every critic I have researched and I have spent hours combing through comments, videos, Reddit, blogs, and all that, trying to find an answer, but all they have are assumptions. You hear things like, she could have, he could have, they could have, or the sun could have entered the water, causing the moon to rise up at a 45 degree angle, casting a white balance. Of course, that's a joke, but that's what I was getting from the critics. A lot of assumptions and probable causes of what could have happened. I just showed you an example. David Clark said the helmet could be Annie wearing a hat. And now we have another person saying it was a full moon. Despite this, no one could explain why it was only on one picture and not three. If it was a photobomb, I wanna believe that Annie should at least be in two pictures, seeing as Jim took the pictures in succession. Why is she just in one? Why did the camera agency refuse to give him his other pictures for months? Yeah, that happened. After the whole blowout, he tried to get some of the pictures back, but they kept giving him excuses. The only way he was able to access the images was by using his neighbor's name. Why that? And for people who know how cameras work, taking a picture while holding the camera to your face and looking through the lens only takes seconds, maybe less than 15, which is a bit long. When Jim Templeton looked through the lens of the 35 mm SLR camera he was using, there was no such thing as an instant return mirror. That means that every time he hit the shutter button, the picture was taken and the viewfinder went dark right away until he turned the wind knob on top of the camera clockwise to move the film forward for the next shot and clear the viewfinder. He didn't need to keep the camera on his face. He would have quickly opened his eyes, taken the camera away, and looked at the scene to make sure Elizabeth was still in the pose. Back in the day before the iPhones and Androids, when we took pictures with an actual camera, 
Every time a picture was taken, the cameraman looked up to adjust whatever needed to be adjusted. It's like a curse of being a cameraman. You look out, look through the lens, look out, then take the picture, then look out again. His goal was to get the shot he wanted. At that moment, he would have seen someone in the background, whether it be his wife or a stranger, even in his upper peripheral vision, if he was crouched down on the ground at Elizabeth's level. He might not have seen someone if the background was in a different place and had bushes, rocks, buildings, or people moving around, but the background was free. The only people present were far from his location. The only truth in this whole case was the men in black. Both critics and non-critics agree that it could be pranksters or overzealous ufologists, which was very common back then. People impersonate government agencies to get access to the unfiltered stories. Even Jim later said he believed they were not from the government. One thing I know is that when something is a lie, the truth always finds a way to come out. And when it does, it does not have assumptions, but facts. Remember the video of Bigfoot? We had proof that it was just someone in a costume. The shop he rented the costume from came out with receipts to show. There is always the truth waiting to come out with facts. In the case of the Solway Spaceman, all we have are assumptions on both sides. So the question now falls, to which assumption do you believe?